Good afternoon, everybody. We are going to get started in a few minutes. Um, I want to go over some ground rules first before we start the webinar. Um, as a participant, you will be muted throughout the program. Um, you will have an opportunity to ask questions towards the end during the Q&A portion of the program. Please put your questions in the chat. Um, if you have questions at that time, you may take yourself off mute then. Um, we also will be recording this webinar. My name is Carmera Thomas, and I'm the Director of Urban Conservation Initiatives at the Conservation Fund. The Conservation Fund Parks with, Pur parks with Purpose program focuses on developing equitable parks and under-resourced communities that are overburdened by environmental stressors, lack access to quality parks, and to address environmental injustices in urban areas. We focus in Atlanta, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Raleigh, Durham, and Kansas City. Through community and equitable centered approaches, the fund supports capacity building and programming with residents, local community organizations, and other partners to develop green space. We integrate social and environmental benefits to address the lack of that green space, but also addressing flooding impacts, food sustainability, habitat creation in these urban communities. I wanna say thank you first and foremost to our friends, funders, sponsors, and those who support our program and our projects. I'm really excited to present this webinar of cultural conservation through art. Art in urban parks is really important. Art can play an essential role in park revitalization, community expression, and relationship building. Parks really provide a great space for communities and artists to collaborate, build long lasting relationships and share purpose. As art is a part of our Parks with Purpose program, we help to preserve history and culture, allow for community members to share their own experiences and stories, foster pride and placemaking in green space development and add value, culture, aesthetic and more. Today, you will hear from three artists who worked on artwork for projects in Atlanta and Raleigh, Tiffany Baker, Sydney Washington, and Mohamed Subair. They will share more about themselves and the projects that they worked on. Tiffany, you're first. Baker. Uh, I am a Brooklyn-based artist uh, living and working out of Brooklyn, New York, and I'm originally from from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I started drawing as early as four years old and uh, my parents noticed that I had a gift so they wanted to nurture that. And uh, they put me, they enrolled me in design school and I started, that's where my art career basically started. Um, after that, I worked corporate for a few years but I felt that I was um, kind of not expressing myself as well as I could in my art and I wanted to foster that relationship again. So I would say like my big break like doing art and coming back to art was in 2016 when I put together um, a body of work and I just invited some friends and family and showed them what I was doing and what I was up to. So I think since 2016 um, things had really taken off. Uh, my art has been on VH1, uh, CNN and HBO. Uh, as well as illustrations featured in children's books. Um, in Bedside, the local community that I live in, um, my art has been featured on uh, local murals, which was really pivotal for my career. And um, as recent as last year, I got a chance to work on a huge 20 by 20 mural in Durham, North Carolina. And that was the first time my art had been featured out of state. Um, which is interesting because I think that's how I got involved with the conservation fund. Uh, I responded to a call for artists uh, asking, um, you know, to present ideas for the Walnut Creek Wetland Center temporary art exhibit. Uh, and so I was selected uh, and I definitely showed them the mural that I did in Durham. So I feel like that was pivotal for my career. So now I think we have a video where I talk about the process for the art that I made. 
Hi, my name is Tiffany Baker. I'm a Brooklyn-based artist, and now I'm working on a project out of Raleigh, North Carolina for the Bailey Drive temporary installation. So far, my favorite part of the art process has been learning a new material. Because my proposal suggested that I'd be working in glass and I'd never worked with glass before, I started glass classes back in March of this year. And it's been really interesting to see how to work with that material and what I can do and kind of like stretch my limits as an artist. I'd say forging new relationships in the industry. I'm Brooklyn based, so working in Raleigh has been hugely rewarding. I feel like I have like a new family down here. I've made contacts with people at Design Workshop, which is an architecture landscape design firm. I've met you, Anaya, the filmmaker, and um, also Matt McConnell Studios has opened its doors and allowed me to use their very expensive machines to create this. So I just feel like I have a new home and how could I forget the conservation fund? They've been hugely vocal and helpful in this whole entire process. So. Forging new relationships 100% has been one of the most rewarding parts of this. Hi, my name is Tiffany Baker. Thank you for that. So that was just a video to give you a little sneak peek behind the scenes of the creation of the glass. It was the nine step process. Um, so basically bridging what I did in the studio with relates to the community was interesting. I thought about kind of like the people who would look at the art from the very beginning and where the art would be placed. And the reason why I chose glass was because just like the community, it was brilliant, beautiful and resilient and it could stay outside and withstand um, different type of weather uh, and hold its integrity. And I felt that was very reflective of the neighborhood that it was in and of the spirit of the people that I would be highlighting. Um, so the community was involved uh, from, from the beginning. Uh, thanks to Jackie Turner, there were recorded oral histories as well as Lindsay Naylor with uh, Design Workshop. And so I wanted to highlight the notable neighbors in my portraits and use their voices and words to teach about the past. So right now this image shows um, one of two community events that we did to uh, meet the neighbors and get them excited about what was to come and actually show the material that I would be working in. Um, so here I am like uh, showing them the glass, the process, how I get the, the images on the glass. Um, and I also introduced myself and it was great because I got to meet, I got to put faces with, um, you know, members who live there or new and old. So that was really, really, really good. Um, so next slide. Uh, okay, yeah, so at the community event, there were um, an opportunity for people to have like family day and like create art. Uh, we had a couple of art tables going. Um, so there were activities all around for people to engage in. Uh, so we can go to the next slide. Yeah, so I chatted about how their oral histories uh, played a role in the direction of the art. And so I really wanted to display or figure out a way to display and highlight the words that had been recorded by the elders and people who have moved on, um, passed on. And so um, one of the things that I wanted people to engage with is kind of like a display sign with uh, real quotes from people who lived or had connection to the area 
Um, and then I wanted to also digitize this experience. So the QR code that you see in the bottom right hand corner will take you to uh, the Bailey Drive Parks with Purpose website that um, houses all of these oral histories and you can go and go through them and listen to each one. Um, I would also mention that the displays that you see here uh, house native plants to the area. So that's another point of consideration with this project is that I really wanted to celebrate um, everything local that was homegrown to this, to this wetland area and how unique it was. So you can go to the next slide. And again, yeah, I really, really felt that the biggest takeaway for me was meeting the actual people that I was honoring and their descendants in my glass portrait. So on the left, we have one of the oldest community members, Willie Taylor Hicks, uh, standing next to the portrait that I created for her. And then on the right, we have uh, Millard Peebles descendants um, who came out during the uh, art reveal. And you know they're just standing next to the art that I created in honor of their father. So that, I mean, I felt like I saw celebrities. Like I was really, really honored that they appreciated the art, that they wanted to be a part of the reveal and that they had something in their own neighborhood that commemorated and honored them. You can go to the next slide. And so here's just like a kind of a detailed shot of three of the portraits that I created. Again, on the left, Willie Taylor Hicks, um, longtime resident. In the center, we have Lillian Curran. She was an educator uh, in the neighborhood and Millard Peoples who uh, had a contracting firm and built most of the houses in this historic neighborhood uh, for black people here in the Rochester Heights area. Uh, next slide. And then I just wanted to let you guys see the space that I was working with. Um, I feel like this was a career first as an artist to have kind of like the freedom and flexibility. This space was 35 feet wide by 140 feet long. So it was by far the longest area, the largest area that I had to work with as an artist. And I'm just very grateful that I was able to create a vision um, and, you know, basically given like full creative control to do something um, in this environment, something that people could experience and uh, take in within their own neighborhood. So it was a walkable art installation. It's still up uh, and whoever wants to go by and see it, if they're local to the neighborhood, they can. Next slide. So in the video, I talked a lot about uh, relationship building and here's a beautiful group shot with my adopted friends and family at Design Workshop. I worked with them very closely during this process as well as, as, well as many other organizations and they helped guide the vision and uh, bring this, uh, my vision to life for the community. They're a um, design landscape and architecture firm in Raleigh, based in Raleigh. Um, and I was working with them um, through the Conservation Fund and Parks with Purpose to bring the reflective history to life. So thank you to the Conservation Fund. Thank you, Design Workshop and all the partners that I work with, Walnut Park and Wetland Creek. And um, thank you for having me be a part of Parks with Purpose. And also without saying to the Bailey Drive and Rochester Heights uh, area and neighborhood. So thank you all for listening. Thank you, Tiffany. Next, we have Sydney. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Sydney Washington, and I did the Katherine Johnston um, mural in English Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. A little background on myself. I am 27 years old, and I am an artist based out of Atlanta. I was originally born in Newport News, Virginia, but I lived out here all my life. Um, I've been into art for years, pretty <laughs> um, taking it more seriously back in 2018. I decided to get more into my canvas work and I hosted my first art show in 2019 of um, 
just a singular show for myself where I had created 22 um, canvas pieces. Sorry, there's a baby in the background. <laughs> but um, I had created 22 canvas pieces uh, for my art show to display and show basically that I was taking my art seriously. Um, since then, I have hosted two more art shows um, actually within the past year. Um, collectively with other artists and it was more of a showcase to bring artists together um, not just visual artists but also people who are creators musicians singers dancers and um, I've been more so doing that hosting the art shows um, had one in January another one in July um, some of my other artwork that I've had in the city I created a canvas piece for Dave for Big Dave Cheesesteak uh, he is he has a few locations, but the one that I created for was in the underground in Atlanta, Georgia. I also did some interior work for Ely Farm Oasis, and that particular work was featured on Tiny Does live concert on YouTube. And um, I also have been featured in a few art shows um, for other people, as including the Virtual Black Business Expo and the Juneteenth. Um, cookout event where I had actually met Alima and she was the one who introduced me to the conservation fund and um, presented this opportunity to do this mural. So um, yeah, uh, we can go to the next slide. In this video, um, oh, sorry. No, I was saying in this video, um, this is just basically an overview of what the mural consists of, and then I'll also go into details afterwards. Hey, uh, just to talk a little bit about it, I'm like really, really excited how it came out. Um, as you can see, we have books here. The books with the names up top are actual books written um, by black authors. And in between each book are victims of police brutality or hate crime that happened in Georgia. And I wanted to, um, memorialize those people in particular because I feel like we have you know our mainstream stories that are you know they're always on the news and we hear their names so often and there's names there's people who have you know also been victims who may not have gotten their story heard or you know they weren't really in the news like that so I felt like it was really important to bring light to their stories as well so I'm really, really happy how that came out. Thank you to the kids who came out because they added their flavor and I love how they, you know, chose the color scheme for me. I think it, you know, added some sauce to it. Um, in between here, we have the open book, which um, has Ivy Young's quote. Uh, the city will like to ensure tragedies like these never happen again. Believe and believe that this honorable resident sacrifice once memorialized will serve as a constant reminder of the ongoing efforts to ensure that we not only remember but continue to educate and prevent future tragedies. The dedication of this park memorialized Katherine Johnson, who made indelible mark on this community and city. Um, and we have Katherine Johnson here. And then the young king on this side to just uh, symbolize the younger generation that looks up to us and those are our future you know kings and queens so we definitely have to nurture those young souls and i love how the flowers came out if i had to choose my favorite part it's definitely the flowers and the young boy and i'm really really proud how Catherine johnson came out me and her we had our struggles for a couple days <laughs> but we finally got it right and i'm very very pleased with what i produced for this project i thank the community for allowing me to be a part of their family now um it was a beautiful experience and for it to be my first project i'm very very grateful and humble so thank you and i hope this is the first of many so Thank you. Um, all right, in this picture, I am standing with um, Alima Ali and Mohammed, who is another artist that will be speaking after me. Um, they were pretty much the two people that I had 
Alima was the one who brought me onto the project and Mohammed was my mentor throughout the project. So I really do appreciate all the insight and help that he gave me. Um, Alima, she, I believe, uh, graduated from her internship and then I was introduced to Kelsey who was my main point of contact throughout the process um, and the whole duration of the project. And uh, you can actually go to the next slide. Um, I feel like the purpose of the mural um, and for the, for the idea of the mural, it was pretty much a composite of just different ideas of people who are involved in the community. And we had got insight from young people, old people, and people who stayed in the area and people who would just come to visit the park. And I wanted to, I wanted to bring the generations together with knowledge and experience and bring light to not only Katherine Johnston's story, but also the other people whose lives were still important and also pushing as like just to educate them to look into these stories and actually learn about these people who are no longer with us today and then also I incorporated the books which were written by black authors and I feel like in today's generation, we don't really sit time, like we don't really sit down and take the time to nurture our brains and actually read a book. And I felt like this would be a good way to um, just bring certain titles to people attention and hopefully they will actually look into the different books that were, that were offered or as well as looking into the stories of the different um, victims who were also a part of the mural. And we can go to the next slide. Uh, here is a picture of our community art day where I had already completed the, the flowers and the open book in the center, as well as the mural of Katherine Johnston and the depiction of the young boy. And like I said, I wanted to tie in the different generations. So with the community art day, I allowed the children to come and I had certain spaces on the mural that were lined off and they were able to color in my, my books for the shelves. Um, they enjoyed it and I really enjoyed looking at them really get into you know their artistic abilities and and leave their mark on this painting because without the community without the children um i don't think that this painting would have you know would have been as as important or would have meant as much as it did so um it was very it was very fun you know looking how excited they were and they basically completed both sides of the bookshelves for me, um, picking their own colors and just looking at them go, it was, it was great. And so I appreciate their help because they were able to help me kind of figure out where I was gonna put all the names and the books. So I really do appreciate them for that. Uh, and we can go to the next slide. This is more of a completed picture of the mural. Um, Within the whole mural, I, I had incorporated um, Ivor Young's quote, which is in the center, and he was a pillar in the community uh, and spoke at the groundbreaking ceremony for Catherine Johnson Memorial Park. Uh, after speaking to a lot of people with, who lived in the community, I realized how important it was to also insert that into the quote. And just seeing the different feedback that I was getting, um, there were there were some people who lived out there and they would come sit with me and you know talk to me throughout painting the project and they would also give me their point of view and they would give, give me their gratitude as well and so it was very um it was very heartwarming to do something that i know was going to be appreciated by the people that basically this project was gifted to and um I know that after speaking to a lot of the people who do live out there in that community, I know that I was doing the right thing and that the message that I was trying to, the, the message that I was trying to portray was, was being you know, heard. Um, as well as Katherine Johnston, I also incorporated uh, victims who were, who um, 
had also had passed due to hate crimes or police brutality. And I would like to speak on their names. Um, Kane Rogers, Oscar Kane, Veltavius Griggs, Aaron Jefferson III, Jimmy Atkinson, Kane, oh, sorry, um, DeAndre Phillips, Rayshard Brooks, Jamarian Robinson, Dietrich Griffins, Tamika Simmons, Simpson, Julian Roosevelt Lewis, Ahmaud Arbery, and Samuel Millard. And I felt that um, these, these stories are just as important. And so I was thankful and I was honored to incorporate a piece with those victims as well. And we can go to the next slide. Um, I think overall, uh, with this being my first mural, I had an amazing experience. Um, as spoken on, I, I enjoyed engaging with the community, um, just having different people and getting to know backgrounds of people who have lived in this community for years, and also speaking to the younger generation and you know, bouncing ideas off of them and seeing the type of things that they're interested in and they're in like, you know, just talking about their future as well. And I now look at myself as the adult that children look up to. So being able to share my experiences and what I've accomplished and being some type of influence on them also was, was a great feeling. Um, I do like to speak on just the impact of this piece and how, one particular um, female had walked past the piece as I was painting it and she actually knew one of the victims that I was painting on the book and to get her response and to see her reaction to, you know, just knowing that her friend was being, you know, remembered and was shown in a positive light. I felt like that was really the whole purpose of what I was doing. And, um, if you would like to look at some more of my work, I do have a website, it's sidpeaceart.com and that's S-Y-D, peace as in peace sign, art.com. I am also, um, as, of, as of this mural, it granted me with another opportunity where I'm now tattooing in Stone Mountain, Georgia. So if you are in the area, um, I do work at Black Lions Tattoos as well and yeah, I want to thank the Conservation Fund. I want to thank Kelsey, Alima, um, Kamara, and everyone else that's involved um, for allowing me to do this honorable piece and to give me this opportunity. And I do hope to work with y'all again in the future. So thank you. Thank you, Sydney, so much. Really appreciate your passion and your work. Um, next, we have Muhammad. All righty. All right, thank y'all. My name, this is, I'm Muhammad. Um, appreciate that shout out, Sydney, even though I ain't do nothing. But uh, yeah, I'm an Atlanta big artist. Um, I'm actually, I've been put on the Lindsay Street Park mural, thanks to the Conservation Fund. Um, thank you, uh, Kelsey. Thank you, Carmara. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna talk too much, but when we did like a preview, I don't even think I like, went past five minutes, so I edited my slides so I could talk a bit more. Can we go to the next slide? All right, where I'm from, what do I do? Uh, so I took the next slide to tell you that. I was born in Yonkers, New York. Um, I also go by artists in us. I grew up predominantly self-taught. Um, I reimagined real life figures into a fantasy setting to produce super, superheroes out of my own work from everyday people that I know. Um, and I do this on both a small and a large scale. I want to use my talents and, ability, and abilities along with um, <clears throat> recreation and park entities. Of course, like the Conservation Fund, Park Pride. Um, I've worked with another, a couple other um, organizations throughout Atlanta to become more involved in public art projects. And this is in order to create a form of socially engaged art. Um, if you look to the left, that's my logo. Oh, okay, bad. All right. So if you look to the left, um, that's my logo. I don't sign any of my work. I only put the logo on, and that's intentionally so that people would basically have to interact with, you know, their peers and their neighbors to actually, if they wanted to know who did the mural. 
Um, and that's basically goes into socially engaged art. Can we move to the next one? Um, how did I get started? Well, okay, so I, this is this was my mentor on my first project, which was on the Bellwood Boys and Girls Club, and we I got this project through Wonder Root, and I was the assistant to this guy Joe Drewer. This guy is amazing. Um, I basically assisted him on this project, and this is actually this ended ended up being one fourth of the project because we ended up doing a whole building, but. Joe here actually taught me pretty much everything I, I, I know now about painting because I didn't start out painting. I started out using markers, color pencils. It's actually still my favorite. I kind of don't really enjoy painting as much as like <laughs> color pencils, markers and things like that. Um, I really like cartoon work, comic book work, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I got on this project with Joe. We ended up doing this, but before the project, which is in English Avenue, which is in the same neighborhood as the Lindsay Street Park project that we're going to be talking about, he he actually brought me on a practice run before we started this at um what is it called uh, Maddie Freeland Park, and he got me to do some spray painting on the wall, and from there I met this guy named Stephen. And from Steven, never, never great guy, he actually introduced me to the Conservation Fund and Park Pride and had me working on a project at that park. Why is this project important to me? Okay, I broke this down into three different things. I'm gonna try to explain this to y'all. The first one, the first, uh, reason was freedom. I know everybody got their different thoughts on what freedom is. Um, to me, it's a couple different things, but I wanted to touch base on not living in fear. To me, that was one of the main forms of freedom that I thought was important when I'm doing artwork. Um, back in 2012, I had this young guy right here that's next to me in a picture. And from that point, I realized that my days were numbered, which had me living in fear. But as I do each and every one of these projects, I put that logo on the mural, knowing that even after I'm gone, I'll still be able to reach out to him through these murals. And not only him, this is to anybody. I'm sure any artist could tell you, you know, how, what it means to still be able to talk to people and still kind of live here even after you don't actually, after we actually go on, you know, you know what I mean? It's almost like a form of being forever young. And that's, that's the main, that's one of the main important reasons for me why, when I get on these projects. And this is actually about my third project. My second, um, my second reason for why things, why this project was important was support. This is a picture taken at Maddie Freeland Park with me. You see, I got the young boy there. This is with members of um, the Conservation Fund and Park Pride and some of the neighborhood association at Maddie Freeland. I think Kelsey is missing from this. Carmera, I don't think you was working for them yet. And Andrew is missing out this picture too. But I mean, support for me was important because it gives me basically a support system and a backbone as I'm doing my artistry that these guys I can reach out to besides the actual projects that we're working on. You know, we have emails for everybody. I could reach out to people at any given time. Kelsey knows that because I've hit her up multiple times and she's been nothing but helpful to me. Um, you know, and that goes along, all of that goes a long way. We can move on to the third one. And my third reason, my final reason was purpose. These projects actually give us purpose so that we're not just painting anything. You know, you could be as, tal as talented as you want to be. And, you know, you get all the oohs and the ahs, you know, from what you do. But if, if, if you don't have like a form of direction, you don't really feel, I don't feel too much 
purpose at the end of the day. And along with that comes sustainability. You know, when I teach, when I when I do my work, I kind of it's always a form of uh, community engagement. And when I'm meeting young kids like this guy, whose name is Justin, I met him at the Boys and Girls Club, and he's been wanting to draw, asking me questions: How do I make money? How do you how are you doing art for a living? How is that even possible? And he kind of just came up under my wing on his own. And I've been teaching him everything I know. And it's it's definitely a form of purpose for me, for him to know that even when I'm not around, he'll be able to do everything, each and everything that I teach him and take it to another level. Um, you could keep this slide. This slide is actually a teaser for the video because in the process of doing this project at Lindsay Street Park, I used the... Um, almost like a paint by number scheme where I draw almost like coloring book pages so that the community could come out and like fill in the blanks. And that's basically what Justin is doing after I've already done, you know, the contour line drawing on a panel. At Lindsay Street Park, it was a, it was, it's five panels put up on a house that's actually parallel to the park because the park doesn't actually have wall space. So Kelsey came up with the idea that we do panels in the empty spaces, you know, in between the windows of the lady's house. And this is one out of five of the panels. And yeah, from that, I'd like to show y'all the video that we came up with.
Okay, so one thing, one thing I forgot to mention is one of the actual purposes for this project, which was to promote the depollution of the Atlanta Proctor Creek. And that's that's the reason for the, you know, all the animals and the plants in these images. Um, I took a trip to see the house beforehand. I think I want to say with Kelsey and Miss Annie. Miss Annie's the owner of the house. And we like walked around the house. The Proctor Creek is actually behind her house. And during that trip, we kind of like walked around the house, went around the back. And one thing that I noticed was like the trash and stuff that was thrown in the Proctor Creek. So as an end result, I wanted out like I wanted to make sure what could I do to get people to stop trash in the place. And this is when I came up with, you know, these guys, these panels was was I was basically, you know, okay, what kind of images can I get to actually make people feel like this is not the place for that. You know, you go into nice neighborhoods and I believe there's no trash there because the place, the places are beautiful and people feel like, you know, if you throw if you throw a piece of trash on the ground in a, in a nice place, the trash doesn't belong there. So if, if I could help beautify her house and, you know, the surrounding neighborhood, hopefully, you know, this project plays its part. And that is a conclusion for me. There we go. Thank you, Mohammed, for sharing that vision and passion. And thank you to Tiffany and Sydney as well. As you can see on this slide, their contact information um, with their Instagram and also website if you're interested in learning more about their art. Um, on behalf of the Conservation Fund and the community, I just want to say thank you for sharing your skill, your passion with us. Um, your attention to the art as a part of these projects is really appreciated. Um, you can see some glowing um, comments in the chat as well. So thank you for that, everybody. Um, so now is the time um, I'd love to open it up for audience questions. You can put them in the chat or you can also take yourself off of mute. Um, before, if anybody had any questions, um, there were a few that we answered in the chat already about where the location of the Bailey Drive installation and also a question about where um, Tiffany's art may be um, next. Um, so there's renderings of a project for Bailey Drive um, Gateway and um, that will be a part of a permanent um, installation. Kelsey, you're managing, you're monitoring the chat to see if there are any other questions. I don't see any questions in the chat, but um, I think one of the questions that I have personally is just if you guys could share um, individually how this project had an impact on you as an artist. Like if there was a sit piece art before you did this and there's like a new sit piece art after and um same for you tiffany and muhammad as well question who wants to be first <laughs> i'll go um, go first tiffany <laughs> i think that i want to do more work with glass specifically and incorporate that maybe kind of into the fine art that I do, um, finding a way to bridge that gap. Uh, I did learn that glass is a very expensive material to work with, and it's a lot of science involved, which um, is interesting. And it made me, it just widened my scope of what was possible with different materials and how to like uh, connect my creative voice with something new. So I would definitely like consider working more with different materials. Um, well, the mural definitely helped um, just continue to, to grow my career. I knew that I wanted to take my art more seriously, you know, a few years ago. And then given this opportunity, it allowed me to really break through that next step of what, what I've been wanting to do. So um, I learned a lot doing this mural, considering it was my first, just you know, working with the weather and, and working with the difference between painting on canvas as opposed to painting on wood. And um, 
I think that's the beauty about art is that you can know so much and you can never stop learning more about it. And so um, I really appreciate, like I really enjoyed and appreciated just being able to try something different and actually step into something that I've always wanted to do. Um, as said in, in my part of the presentation, um, the tattoo shop that I'm currently working at now, he saw my mural and was like, hey, if you can handle that, I'm pretty sure you can handle this. So, you know, are you still interested? And when people ask me all the time, like what got you into um, artwork? I, I used to, you know, draw tattoo sketches back in like high school and I would sell those. And so I would say all the time, tattooing is what got me into canvas work. And now canvas work is getting me into tattooing. So it, it's like a cycle and it's like the gift that doesn't stop giving. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, I, I've been presented with um, more interior work, um, just the appreciation for the canvas work that I do it's not as hard of a struggle now. Like people actually understand the work and effort that I put into my work. And so I, I'm thankful for that as well. And I just hope that this continues to flow and that, you know, as I continue to produce more work then it will be seen by more and more people, so. Awesome, thank you. Mohammed. Yeah, I think for me, um... The biggest challenge for me was drawing animals. I was definitely used to drawing like portraits and landscapes, houses, maybe a, maybe a few plants. I've definitely drew like flowers for people, but the animals was definitely a, like a next step. Um, and of course, no, I definitely wasn't opposed to it. I actually liked the outcome, so it was pretty good. Um, I looked at Terry from Park Pride was like most of my inspiration when it came to that Park Pride. Her art is, is amazing. She definitely does like plants and animals. So I like strolled through her Instagram a little bit, you know, stole a little bit of her swag and then, you know, took on the project. And uh, in the future, I mean, I'm kind of already doing more animals now. Terry actually got, she has me drawing some, uh, what is it, some cardinals some cardinals for Maddie Freeland's playground area. So it's already continuing. I'm happy about it. We have a couple questions and we also have a hand raise, Eric. Thanks everybody. I just wanted to add my appreciation for your, for your uh, comments here and your artwork. All three of you have, have worked with the community or with young people in the community to execute the art. I wonder if you might talk a little bit about, I mean, Mohammed, I know you kind of started that way, getting uh, participatory art, but has that changed your approach, your thinking? Are you thinking different ways in, take, in terms of taking your art in the future by that uh, type of participatory uh, aspects of, of your artwork? Um, I would definitely, oh. Mohammed, do you want to go? No, go ahead. You got it. I would say yes, um, conceptually for sure. Uh, a lot of the art that I make and produce is based on storytelling. And I feel like storytelling is like the cornerstone of the art that I create, whether it be my own or bringing other people's stories to life, which is why I really wanted to highlight um, the oral histories and people's memories of the space that I uh, commemorated. So I would definitely say yes, I would love to work with people bringing their memories, visions and stories to life. Um, I don't have uh, as much um, experience working with like collab projects, like actual people like painting with me, um, but I really do like the conceptual. Is she free? I think Tiffany froze. Mohammed or Sydney, do you want to jump in? Um, I said, I'll let Mohammed go. Go ahead, Mohammed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, working, working, making these projects like a community project is really what kind of like keeps me going. Honestly, I actually, I mean, I love drawing. I've been drawing. And at the same time, because of that, it gets boring. So like when I get, when I'm drawing, I, when I'm drawing, for instance, like the contour line drawings, I'm in there like by myself. It's boring. The music keeps me going at that point. So 
I'm anticipating the moment where I get to take these pieces outside and work with other people. Um, at the same time, I mean, it makes me like strong. It makes me a better person to actually, you know, have to, you know, live up to like some of these like young kids. For instance, yesterday, literally yesterday, I went outside. Somebody tried to sell me a jersey. Somebody tried to sell me a football jersey because <laughs> it matched my sneakers. It didn't even match my sneakers, but he was so convinced that it matched my sneakers. I'm like, it's definitely a different blue. <laughs> <laughs> and he like, he like, he had take the jersey. He knew I could draw. He's like, take the jersey. Tomorrow, I want you to come by and I have, I'm bring a pair of pants. He said, I want you to draw an AK on my pants. And I'm like, uh, okay. And I just got to thinking like, that is not what I do. I got to thinking about all the people I've been painting with, all the kids that I'm like mentoring. And I'm like, no, I can't do it. I'm, I was like, I can't do it. I refuse. Maybe something else. I mean, then he like, he, he basically brought up something else. He was like, well, can you draw this plant for me instead? And this lion face. And I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> But yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a good thing. I love working with the community. I don't think I'll ever really stop because that's definitely what's keeping me going. Thanks for having Tiffany. Uh, Sydney. Um, I, I'm really strong on um, bringing different artists and people who inspire to be artists together. I think that's extremely important to me. And that's part of the reason why I host my collective art shows because I always tell um, like my artist friends when they're looking at my work and they're like, oh my gosh, your work is so amazing. Like, I wish I can do this or how to do that. I'm also looking at their work and I'm like, you're a beast. Like, I wish I can do, you know, I, I wouldn't, I don't want to put limits on my artwork, but I know where my strong points are and I know where the places that I need to work harder on. And the friends that I inspire also inspire me as well. And so, um, I think it's I think it's beautiful appreciating art and different types of you know just different scales of art and I know working with kids isn't something that I have had much of an opportunity to do when it comes to my artwork but I've always been someone who loves to give back to the community and be involved in my community and um, even being out in that um, in English Avenue working on that that particular piece. Um, I would have people come up to me on a regular basis and I would tell them, this is, this is the angle that I would love to take. I would love to create a community um, art center for children. So that's something that I am in, in process of working on, something that I have thoughts about, um, just trying to figure out the more finer details of how to make it happen. But that is something that I'm looking forward into creating within the next five years. And I think that that's important because not all kids are interested in playing sports. My nephew, personally, he's mildly autistic and he, you know, he, he enjoys more video games and comic books and he enjoys, you know, being to himself and he has his interests, but it's not the interest that me growing up his age, I would see a lot of kids doing. So I would like to cater to children who don't have um, the tools or they don't have necessarily the space to go to in order to make their visions or like expand on their creativity. And so that is something that I'm working on. I would love to continue to work within a community um, creating more, more mural pieces if possible, and also doing collective pieces as they're presented to me. Mm -hmm. I will also say one thing that um, made me think of something else is that in my neighborhood of Brooklyn starting um, last year, I was involved in like a couple community projects where I painted uh, community refrigerators, which are refrigerators that live outside and people donate food, free food, and anyone who needs food can just open the refrigerator, passers by, and like take produce, vegetables, anything. And I would definitely love to continue doing that type of work and more work because I feel like food scarcity is a real thing. Even though we live in such um, a place of plentiful um, resources, you still have, you know, people who suffer from hunger and, you know, it's just, it's unequal. So I feel like leveling that playing field and taking the stigma off of, a family that needs a community refrigerator to make ends meet 
as well as exposing them to art and as well as exposing them to an experience that is um, happy versus, you know, not everyone has time to go to a food pantry or stand in line or it's just not conducive to people's schedules. So I think that work has been like something that just came up organically that I was involved in that is super rewarding to me. And I would definitely like to continue doing more projects like that. That's awesome. Yeah, I really love how each of you have your own way of being inspired, but also inspiring the community that you're working with and in. Um, really appreciate that. And your passion just really shows through um, in that and just your acts of service um, with your art. Um, so that's really appreciated. Um, two of the questions that we had in the chat. Um, one question is, had you desired to work in open spaces prior to this project? Um, or did this open you up, uh, this open you to new ways to ex expose your art? Um, so did you want to answer that? I would like to start on this. <laughs> <Go ahead, Sydney. laughs> um, this project was actually like a blessing in disguise. Um, when I was given this opportunity, I was actually, like I said, I had met Alima at a Juneteenth event, and this was of 2000, and um, it was last year, so 2020, and we all know COVID hit, <laughs> COVID hit, like, around March, you know, people were, were really low, um, you know, trying, trying to find work, trying to figure out what this new, what we were dealing with, and it hit me as well, so, um, I wanted to broaden my artistry and I actually had applied for um, an art job on the Beltline, which is a real prominent art space out here in Atlanta. Um, I did not get that opportunity when I applied, but it was around the same time that I was presented with this um, particular one and I also applied for this as well. And at the time, I was so focused on the Beltline because I was like, yeah, it's like in a major park. You know, it was like many people go there all the time. And Alima, she um, comment, she contacted me and was like, you know, are you still interested? And even though I was so focused on that, I was like, you know what, let me just try this out and see if it works. And like I said, it was a blessing because I didn't get that job opportunity and I got this one. And in a way, I'm a, like, I enjoy the fact that this particular piece had meaning and purpose to it because it it brings more value to the art itself and so instead of just throwing something on you know a wall where it's also accompanied by two uh, like 200 other artists work and you know it's just it's being stuck there like my piece actually is in a place where it stands out and people can go there and they they can sit there and look at it and ask questions about it and they can also get information from it so I think that this was more so the path that I needed to take, um, even though it wasn't expected at first, and I was I was just trying to make it by at that time. It was okay. We're just selling work just to just to survive at this time. Like we're just going to be creative just to live, and I was really able to use my gift and my passion in order to sustain myself, but also like make make someone else's vision and also show my show appreciation to those around me and just do what I love to do in a way that is going to be honored so either Tiffany or Muhammad you want to answer that question as well um I, I you, think before, were you going to say something I was going to say you touched on it a little bit when you were talking about the large space um and just wanted if you wanted to yeah, so I think before this project, open spaces had really intimidated me, which is super ironic. Um, I do have a background in industrial design and kind of like that, that field is a little bit adjacent to architecture. It's a little bit adjacent to interior and um, exterior design, but I never really sunk my teeth into it. And so when I was presented with basically a canvas that wasn't like at 90 degrees or upright, it's kind of like my brain had to work in a different way. So like, how are we going to um, show people something? Will it have a, what's gonna be the front? What's going to be the back back of the, the piece? And 
I think the space really inspired the art that I created because you, you're you not relying on something being the front and something being the back. And that's what I think inspired the walkable art where you could really engage with it from all angles and 360 degrees and actually walk through the art. So through this process, I will say it's like inspired me to think um, more broadly about how my art is presented and how it's installed and just basically like installation work. And um, I think I was intimidated, number one, because going into this project, I was really, I think Muhammad touched on this a little bit where, I don't know if you use this exact words, but you were like um, resources or community building or something like that within this art practice, you were talking about the group shot and how like basically on a project, everybody kind of comes together. And I'm, they projects are interesting because you have highs and lows, um, you have elation and depression, like just all like sandwiched into this short amount of time. And I'm pretty sure everybody here could relate. So I was a little bit um, nervous about the resources and where uh you know the support was going to come from in terms of helping me conceptualize my idea but at every single turn like faithfully like as soon as the question came up an answer was presented and that was because we had um you know just the support and the resources to kind of think think outside of the box and every you know on a team you have everybody's expertise coming together to help you like from the most like understood to the most obscure. So I feel like I was extremely supported during this process. And I was with like amazing people to help me like conceptualize and bring things together uh, for the community because at the heart of it, everybody wanted this to come together for the community. So I'm extremely grateful for that. And it's made me like venture off into the idea where I could like do like more open green spaces um, projects. That's great. Thank you. Mohammed. Um you like to touch on that question? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was doing it before the project. I was doing co community projects before this one. Um, I still got I got one scheduled now after it. I don't plan on I don't plan on stopping, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's only up from here for real. Um, yeah, I'm going to do as much as I possibly can. I will say that uh, I used to work at the Boys and Girls Club, you know, as the art instructor. And these kids, they find me on the Instagram, they find me on the video game. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's come back, come back, come back. I do want to take a break for a couple months, but, and I mean, I'll probably do that next year. But yeah, there's no better feeling than people coming up, you know, to an outside project and giving you compliments and, you know, sharing their thoughts on it. There's no better feeling than that. appreciate that. Um, I'll do one last question and we're getting close to the end of time. Um, there was a question about, uh, could you share a little bit about how this art either connected to you personally or connected um, you to community members um, in that local green space or in nature um, or to the environment or any way, how did that connect to you personally or in the community? And anyone can go first. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take this one first. All right. Um, well, mine, as you see, like was a bunch of the animals in a Proctor Creek. And I told y'all that was my like first time. So it was definitely nice getting like the research, doing my own research on, you know, what animals to kind of choose, what plants to kind of use. I kind of took some of the plants from like Sydney when I was, you know, working a little bit with her. She did all the work, but you know, she she would tell me like which plants was like indigenous to you know our surroundings. So it was kind of like, you know, I could use this flower, I could use that flower. Um, you know, and taking my own research when I posted it on the gram, Instagram, it was like I definitely like pinpointed some of the research that I learned and like put that in the comments for each picture as I posted. So it was definitely a learning process for me. And of course, my job was to kind of you know, put other people on as well. I'll stop there. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Tiffany or Sydney? Yeah, similar to Muhammad, it's like just learning how to incorporate um, the local plants and how I would do that in the final piece with the, the upright planters. And then I learned a lot about um, 
because the neighborhood, this is why I can't even believe I glazed over this. The neighborhood, the historically black neighborhood that I created the art for is in a floodplain. And so that had been a big issue for the residents there. And I mean, we see it time and time again where, you know, the poorest of communities or, you know, the most, mo most marginalized communities are in um, areas that are not the best taken care of in terms of city planning. So that was a big issue with them um, in their neighborhood. I think, I don't, I don't remember which hurricane it was, but houses in that neighborhood were completely washed away. So the integrity of the land was one thing I had to think about in terms of like creating art for that area and thinking about how I was going to support structures that weren't a hazard uh, was another thing that I had uh, contemplated about. And um, just being around Raleigh and kind of like, first of all, I'll say Raleigh is dope. I live in Brooklyn, New York. And when I was in Raleigh, I felt like that was my second home. So I just, you know, the South, I, I, I messed with y'all. So that was nice. That was nice. Um, and then I noticed like how it's like more of an outdoor culture, I feel, uh, especially just taking time outside and like spending time in green spaces. So I did take on cues from like the, the local residents that I saw and I, I've seen a lot of these like upright planters that people had in their yards or at restaurants. Um, they're originally like cattle feeding uh, metal basins. And so I got the idea after seeing them around so much that this could be the foundation for um, the planters in my that you see in the final piece. Um, so I really like took inspiration from the local area. Like I wouldn't have seen that walking around in Brooklyn, New York. So it's definitely homegrown and organic how that came about. I forgot where I was going with that, but basically uh, <laughs> that's how the community inspired me to create that decision. And, and like I said, every turn of the way, as soon as a question was presented, there was an answer. So um, I think that's, that's, that would be my response to that prompt. That was awesome. Um, Sydney? Um, well, definitely feel as if um, while being out there, I got to have like get the opportunity to speak to different people and different backgrounds. Um, I would get told often like, oh, you're adding beauty to the park because I guess like the piece is like really bright. If you were to drive to the other side of the park, you can still see it and it stands out. And um, I would, I would talk to, uh, there was uh, this one particular person, he, he goes by BAM, um, but he would, he would ride up on his bike and he would check up on me like, how you doing today? And we'll talk back and forth. And we, you know, we were looking around the park and sometimes, you know, the park may have, you know, trash and stuff around the park. And there were days that I would go out there early just to help pick up trash. And um, just just being told like my piece is adding beauty to the park i wanted to like legit contribute to adding beauty to the park with just making sure that the park stayed stayed clean for the kids and make making sure that it was it was an enjoyable park to go to because if you really go into that area the park it you know it stands out and um it's a it's a how can i put it um it's definitely a place that people come to. And um, I know that the community itself appreciates that type of park with the type of equipment that the park offers in their community because it adds some type of light to it. And um, I, I just, I don't know, like even, even dealing with the kids, like there were days that like I would see the kids out there and there was this one time I actually saw like, I guess the lady didn't expect for the ice cream to be, um, to be as much and like I would hear this ice cream truck every day like every day I was out there and like that one day I decided I want to get ice cream and then I saw the kids going back and I bought them like little dollar pops and that was my opportunity to engage with her and um you you would be surprised who you would you would spark conversations with that you probably would never talk to on a regular basis but I I had two hour three hour conversations people buying me lunch people buying me dinner just because they wanted to hear like, well, what did this project mean to me? And um, just giving their gratitude to me. So I think for me, it was really just working with the individuals that create the, the environment of that area. And um, 
like mama was saying, doing the research with the flowers. I just wanted to cater to everybody's thought on the mural and making a piece that was collectively appeasing to everybody. I think that was the, the most important part. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank all of you for just sharing again. Um, you inspire me for sure. I'm sure you're inspiring others. I'm just seeing all the comments in the chat and just the relationships that you have with people in the community and your work um, is just really appreciated and inspiring. Um, and we hope to continue to work with you um, at the Conservation Fund and people check out their Instagrams and their websites so that you can also um, look at more opportunities for art in your neighborhood. Um, Again, just thank you on behalf of the Conservation Fund, our funders, supporters, friends. It was a joy to have you on this afternoon sharing your passions, Tiffany, Muhammad, and Sydney, and all of you for attending this webinar. Thank you so much and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Thanks.